Well, I don't know. I guess I guess what I would suggest we we call the meeting to order. Um and uh we'll start with a public hearing and and see if anyone else uh see if everyone else shows up if that's okay. Yes, sir. Do you have some amendments to the agenda? Right. Right. So we have the one about the renaming the road, yeah. right? Luna Lane, yes. Um, there's going to be correspondence, and also we need to have a discussion about uh, my conversation today with RB Tech. Okay, and I need to have a conversation because I've been getting emails from Mike Hill who wants to meet with me personally. Uh, is that something that we have to discuss at this meeting? I would prefer only because he wants to hear from me yesterday. You know, he's, I don't know. I'm reluctant to meet with them by myself. That's what I'm saying. So I want to talk about it at the select board meeting. Okay. Sarah? Yes. Um, or Peter, Dexter would also like to have a moment at the end of the meeting or some time for a public comment, if that's possible. Or the beginning. Or the beginning. <laughs> is, this, is this a public comment about the zoning regulations or about some other? No, just a general public comment. Okay, that's fine, Dexter. Well, well, just a couple of minutes. My comment will be in just one minute or less. Okay, well, I would I would suggest we'll we'll see if we can zip you in before the fire department at five thirty. Is that okay? Yeah, thank you. Because then we've got the fire department, then we've got an executive session. You might be here for a while. Okay, so um, with that, we have uh, Blair. Anzalone, I believe, is that correct, Blair? iPad 53, you're muted. You're gone. Well, they didn't like that. Well, that's interesting. So we do have we do have Dexter in the office. We have uh, Shelly uh, on the Zoom. Good evening, Shelly. And other than that, uh, the select board and Dorinda Crowell are treasurer welcome everyone thank you so, um please don't let me forget the uh in a minute let me write down here okay so i'm going to uh, call a public hearing on the updated middlesex land use and development regulations uh to order um i was going to suggest uh depending on who was here and what their concerns were that we quickly grow through, and I mean quickly, the major changes to the zoning regulations, and I was going to use the uh, PowerPoint presentation that the uh, Regional Planning Commission used for our previous hearing, just because that gives a good quick outline of, of what the major changes are. But I don't know, Shelley, do you have any, any particular questions or concerns before we do that, or Dexter? Nothing from Dexter. Nothing from Shelley. Okay, thank you. So uh, what did we determine about putting it up on the screen, Sarah? Can we do that? Uh, it might I mean, be a little different. I also have it up on my iPad, so I can just read it. I mean, it's pretty simple. Yeah, why don't we do that? That's better. So um, I'm going to go through this pretty quickly. Stop me if you have any... any uh, questions or concerns. So the goals of the amendment to our zoning regulations are as follows, to clarify, simplify, modernize, and align. Those sound like pretty good goals to me. Uh, they then outline the process, which I'm not going to go over. Uh, they talked about public input provided by surveys, and uh, then, they get, then they get to the proposed uh, changes. And one of the most significant changes is to streamline the permit process, merging the functions of the Planning Commission and the ZBA, creating one design review board. And I believe we have already done that, haven't we? Yep. It's just that it's also incorporated in the zoning regulations. So that is the done deal. If anybody has any questions or concerns about that, we can, we can uh, talk about it. Uh, it gives an outline about how that streamlines streamlines the uh, the permit process, uh, 
administrative permits are permitted by the uh, now permitted by the uh, zoning administrator. Site plan review is provided by the the DRB, the new DRB, and conditional use is also permitted by the DRB. So there is no longer uh, or will no longer be a two-step process in the permit uh, process. Um, the existing town plan says that we want to encourage small-scale commercial development in the village district and maintain the historic village as a commercial, cultural, and civic center of the community. The proposed change is to increase allowable uses to include accessory buildings, galleries, studios, and museums, and also, as I've already mentioned, streamline the permit process uh, for more uses. Um, the town plan says, allow for growth in the area west of the village and north of the interstate that complements but does not detract from the village and avoid strip development. And the proposed change is streamline permitting for light industrial, professional offices, garden centers, and recreation facilities and allowance for accessory retail in the mixed use district, which is that area. Town plan says, target the mixed use and village zoning district for new housing, including a diversity of housing types. And the proposed change is reduce lot sizes and setbacks in the village district, streamline the approval process, which again, we've already talked about for small scale multifamily dwellings, three to six units and seven or more units still require, would still require conditional use. <sighs> I'm running out of breath here. Here we go. Permitting, like, excuse me, town plan says, make permitting process for home-based businesses clean, easy, and affordable. Uh, ensure child care centers are permissible where appropriate and make the permitting process clear, easy, and affordable. And again, that's covered in the streamlined uh, permit process, which we've already discussed. Town plan says support agricultural enterprises while preserving natural and agricultural resources, fragile features and the scenic and rural character of our community. Uh, again, clarify uh, the state exemptions for agriculture and forestry operations. Uh, specifically allow farms the ability to diversify their operations and increase their ability to market agricultural products by defining a permit process for accessory on-farm businesses. Town plan says, examine the town zoning map and update as needed. The zoning map should, be, should respect the areas identified for conservation. Prepare for future flood hazards and keep new buildings, utilities, and other infrastructure set back from streams and rivers so that the flood flows are neither restricted nor diverted to the detriment of others. And the proposed change is limit new buildings in the floodplain to reduce the risk of flood damage by clarifying flood regulations to prohibit new dwellings in the floodplain along with a prohibition of new buildings. Reduce new industrial development near the floodplain by converting a portion of the zoning district designated along a portion of Route 2. And if you are concerned about that, uh, on the town website, you can get the zoning regulations, which include the map, which shows that. Town plan says, encourage economic development that will provide good paying, highly skilled jobs and desired services to town residents. Allow smaller, the proposed changes, allow smaller lots, one half acre in place of one acre to allow more industrial development in the industrial district. Town plan says, increase affordable housing options in Middlesex. Ensure that accessory dwelling unit provisions in the zoning code meet state requirements, target mixed use, medium density residential and village zoning district as targets for 80% of new housing, including a diversity of housing types. And the proposed changes increase the flexibility of property owners to add more affordable housing by allowing accessory dwelling units up to 1100 square feet Current regulations only permit such units to be up to 600 square feet. 
Town plan says, to help maintain Middlesex forests and fields, development should be planned and carried out to ensure the continued use of forests and fields and avoid fragmentation of identified forest blocks and connectivity, align the zoning regulations to reflect this goal. This could include a change to developable areas as well as enhanced resource specific standards. And the proposed change is to include specific natural resource protection standards in the subdivision review process, such as limiting development near streams or wetlands, protecting important habitat areas, and avoiding development on steep slopes and ridgelines. And again, uh, in the draft uh, document, which is on the town website, it shows a map for the areas where there are proposed to be those changes. And that is, is pretty much it. That's a quick executive summary of the changes. Again, uh, the entire document is available uh, on the town website, all 98 uh, pages of it. I wouldn't presume to go, to go through it uh, tonight, needless to say. But if anybody has any, any feedback or any, any thoughts about uh, those draft regulations, please uh, get to the select board as soon as possible. Our goal is to have these zoning regulations uh, voted on at town meeting next March. If the board decides to make any significant changes to these regulations, and we did not do that after the planning commission presentation, we wanted to wait till after this hearing. Um, if there are any significant changes, then it's likely we would need to have one more uh, public hearing, but we have plenty of time to do that if need be. So with that, anybody have any questions, concerns, issues? Yes, Victor. Yeah, I was wondering, like when you you were talking about um, the town plans support agricultural enterprises, um, preserving natural and agricultural resources, and then it says over on the change, uh, clarify state exemptions for agriculture and forest operations. And I think that seven nine is what they were talking. Does any do you know, or does anybody know what the what the clarification is? What what that says about as far as forestry goes? What I what I believe that. It does, Victor, it's just bring our zoning regulations in, a, in alignment with the state regulations. But I don't have the whole doc, I don't have the whole document up in front of me. Okay. And the other thing, the second thing I had was uh, I think you stated there, you know, it's in the part about uh, you know, uh, uh, regulating where something can be built as far as wetlands, ridge lines, 25% grades, uh, uh, wildlife. Uh, yep. Okay, so that's fine, and I kind of understand that, but uh, I think Shelly is still here. But but how do you get, how do we get that? Uh, how do we, uh, I don't think that our listing uh, uh, highest and best use uh, quite fits some of these programs that are some of these uh, restrictions and regulations. I mean, I don't think you're going to solve the problem here tonight. In other words, if you can't, you know, a lot of a lot of some of these properties, some of these properties they've got is building lots, and and you're not going to be able to build on them, so they shouldn't be assessed as much. What do you think? What does the board think about that? Well, I think if you have, if you let's let's say for instance, and I and I think we've basically already already done this in the in the flood zones, but I'm going to use the flood zones example. Yeah. Let's say let's say you have a property that's in the flood zone, and you want to build a house on it. Well, okay. you know, you, we're going to tell you it's unbuildable, right? right? So does that undoubtedly reduce the value of that piece of property? I would say it does. Okay. All right. And listeners would need to take that into consideration. I mean, any of this stuff, if we're, if we're making a change, which either A, increases the value of a piece of property, or B, potentially decreases a piece of property, um, then the listers need to take that into consideration. Absolutely. Yep. And um, Yeah. That's that's all I was asking about, and then um, of course there. Uh, I guess I could ask Sandy, but you know we, they had a couple of subdivision uh, hearings this summer, and I won't go into detail on who they were, but probably we all know. And and there was a lot of discussion on the uh, as far as the uh, planning commission was concerned. Is this a large subdivision or is this small subdivision? Uh, 
is this okay or is that okay? And I mean, a couple of uh, a couple of the lawyers for the subdivision uh, for the people that were trying to get a subdivision, and I, and I don't mean this to be sarcastic or or uh, accusing anybody of, that, but but it seemed like they didn't have. Uh, they didn't understand their own regulations or they didn't have enough regulations in to to see whether uh, they could give a permit or not. And I was wondering if these new regulations will perhaps uh, put clarity to that so that, um, you know, they can uh, decide in a timely manner uh, and uh, whether they can give a subdivision or whether the people have to wait another four. Well, the good news is, the really good news is, it's just going to go to the design review board. So it's going to be one group. And when I read the when I read the regulations, and I did it the other day, and I don't have yeah. them in front of me, it sounded pretty straightforward to me. What was a minor subdivision and what was a major subdivision? Okay. But regardless, they both go through the design review process, and I think the only difference is that the major subdivision requires a site plan review, which probably it should. Right. Okay. But I think it's pretty clear. I mean, it's not going to be in in the old days. It was one board or the other would would get the permit, and there was confusion about who was supposed to get it and who was supposed to hear it and what the appeal process and all that was. The the one of the purposes of this whole uh, design review board is that it's all in one room in one place with one group of people. But it's the same group as on planning commission in a lot of cases, right? Yes, it is. Let's have the same people. So, point, point of clarification, it's not a design review board, which are very different things. It's development review board. I'm sorry, development review board. I'm just, I apologize. Right. Yes. Okay. That's it. We're not, we're not, we're not, uh, we're not getting into designing buildings, I hope. No. Okay. That's all I have. Thank you. So, so I, I really would encourage everybody, it, it takes some time, but I would say you're probably... 40, 35 or 40 pages of real meat to the zoning regulations where they talk about what's allowed, what are the setbacks, what are the, you know, all the stuff in the different zoning districts. That's really where the meat of it is. And it doesn't take that long to go through that. And I would encourage everybody to do it. And if they see anything or have any concerns, uh, please let us know. And let us know ASAP too. Don't, don't, uh, don't call us up the week before town meeting and say, hey, I'm concerned about this or concerned about that. By then it's gonna to be too late. Okay. Everyone's good. Okay, so we are a little ahead of schedule and Dexter, we are ready for your public comment. Oh, oh. now I can take 10 minutes instead of one minute, huh? Oh no, no, I didn't say that, Dexter. <laughs> uh well, uh I'm Dexter LeFevre. I live in Middlesex. I'm running for state senate. So I came just to uh, I'm going to visit every select board in the district, which is all of Washington County, plus three towns, which are Stowe, uh, Braintree, and Orange. Um, so I'm just coming out, introducing myself. Uh, you guys already know me, so I'm just giving you the, the happy news of, of that I'm, I'll be on the ballot, or I'm already on the ballot, I guess. Um, and just mention that my platform consists of three basic things. First being to try to uh, make Vermont affordable, especially for lower income people. Um, it's a hard place to get started if you're a young person. It's a hard place to finish life if you're on a fixed income as an in, in elderly or retired person. Um, the other thing I'm going to try to do is bridge the partisan divide. Um, I'm running as an independent with endorsements from both the Republican and Libertarian Party, but I, I intend to stay true to my independent spirit. Some of you are familiar with that um, and uh, be able to... Uh, bridge uh, the divide between parties. And the uh, third thing for me is to really promote uh, sensible policy, um, most specifically with regard to um, energy, for example. And, and that comes back to affordability. We've got energy policy, uh, policies such as the Efficiency Vermont program that charges a 6% tax on, on everybody's uh, electrical consumption. And that's really a, a regressive tax. Uh, disguised as a fee, and that sort of thing really hurts the Vermont economy, hurts low-income people, and uh, is sort of policy that I, I think could be improved in something that's much uh, more sensible than that. So, you know, also areas of healthcare, 
education and the environment are areas where we can improve our policies to just do better moving forward. So that's it. I hope I didn't go much over a minute. Certainly didn't go 10. <laughs> Happy to take any questions. Flaming arrows. Oh, thank you, Victor. And uh, Dexter. Dexter. Thank you, Dexter. <laughs> and uh, yeah. I've, got Victor on the, I've got Victor on the brain tonight. I'm sorry. Thank you, Dexter. And good luck. All right. Thanks. It's important for people to run for public office. So good for you. I, I know the drill. I know you do. <laughs> All righty. Thank, thank you. you. Have a good night. Thank you. Yep. All right, guys. Have a Thank good you. Yeah, you too. Okay, so uh, next on the agenda is the monthly joint meeting with the Middlesex Fire Department. Uh, monthly update from the Volunteer Fire Department and preparing for uh, the public hearing on October 4th, are retransitioning the Fire Department from a separate 501c3 organization into a town department. Uh, action unlikely. I, I did meet with the uh, President and uh, Chief of the Fire Department last night, just to have a quick uh, discussion of what we anticipated at the at the public hearing, and that meeting went very well. I'll let them uh, I'll let them speak for themselves, but uh, we're optimistic and excited to uh, to move ahead with the process. So, with that, I'll reckon. Are you gonna are you speaking, Jeff or Eric or who? Yeah, I'm speaking. <laughs> okay. So, uh, yeah, from the meeting. <clears throat> excuse me. From the meeting last night, uh, first off, I haven't been sick. I've just been traveling. Uh, the meeting last night, I thought, went well. I think we solved what a uh, few questions we had. Uh, we are going to bring it up to the members tonight to discuss it. Um, and, of course, we got to get their you know, final approval. But I think everything, considering that for the most part, nothing really changes, um, I don't, I don't really see any issues, um, but we'll, we'll talk about it at the meeting tonight and then we'll get back to you on that. Um, as far as our monthly updates, uh, another really busy month of four calls, just like last month. Uh, engine six went out twice. I mean, engine one went out twice. Engine six didn't go out. Tanker one went out once and rescue went out once. Um, we do have a total of 44 calls so far. Uh, on the 29th of August, we had a fire alarm activation at Red Hen, always a pucker factor. It ended up being a false alarm, but uh, engine one, tanker one, rescue one, and six responders responded to that call. On the 1st of September, there was a call for a vehicle fire on Notch Road. It ended up not being a fire. It was just uh, oil leaking on an engine. Engine one and two responders for that one. On September 2nd, on Lower Sunnybrook Road, there was a call for a possible structure fire. Um, the caller waited about 25 minutes before calling in on that one um, and reported that it looked like smoke was coming from the back of a trailer. Nothing was found. No equipment uh, responded. Two responders did go up and check it out. And on the 7th of September, on Route 2 in Lower Barnett, there was a grass fire reported. Um, P8 responded uh, as he was driving by, found nothing, uh, canceled the response. So no vehicles responded, but six uh, responders did respond to the station. As far as training, next month we're doing uh, fire extinguisher training. And as far as uh, purchases, we have ordered the air packs. Um, <clears throat> we did, but when the original um, uh, bid came in. It was for 45-minute tanks. I didn't catch that in the initial um, looking at it. We used 30-minute tanks, so we changed that to 30-minute tanks. Uh, that did lower the amount some, which we ended up um, adding four more masks, so we can issue a mask to each person on the department, so they're carrying their own instead of having to swap masks at a scene. Um, they'll be They'll be maintained here in the fire station with their, their fire gear. Um, we also uh, needed to get some uh, eyeglass inserts for those um, that are um, visually challenged for farsightedness. Um, and then we are going with the lithium battery packs. Um, there's no extra charge for the, the lithium batteries in the kits themselves. Um, we did buy two spare 
packs in case we happen to need those at a scene and we had to buy the charger or the recharger. That saves us a lot of maintenance um, on the, the air packs, which would require changing batteries every six months. It also changes a lot of waste with the batteries that we'd have every six months. Uh, so we felt that was a better route to go getting those lithium battery packs. Um, as far as fast squad, there were eight total calls and those are all medical calls for the, for the month. Any questions? How far out's the equipment? Pardon? How, how far out is the equipment? You said you've ordered it. Yeah. Uh, there, um, uh, he's, we did a mask fit on Tuesday. And so Reynolds is working on to when they're going to, when the new packs are going to be arriving. <clears throat> Did the total amount still stay under the seventy thousand? So we we hit the seventy thousand and and uh, we went above that uh, four hundred four hundred eighty eight dollars, uh, which will come out of our budget. Okay. Actually, it's gonna it's gonna be two hundred and fifty dollars more than that because we added two more eyeglass kits because I forgot somebody got glasses uh, and somebody else I didn't count. So, um, but that'll come out of our, uh, out of our budget line. Okay. Any questions, anyone? Okay. Thank you, Jeff. And uh, again, let's keep the good, uh, let's keep the good friendly spirit going through the, through the public hearing and on into the future. Well, yeah, especially on in the future. Uh, I, I, <laughs> I'm, I'm really enjoying this, our open conversations that we're having about the department. It makes things for our planning and going forward a whole lot easier. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Good thing. Scott, you got here at the last minute. I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. For once, for once in our history, we're a little bit ahead of, uh, ahead of schedule. Yeah, that's always I good. Think, I don't think there's any surprise news that you need to be concerned about. Uh, see him tonight at business meeting anyways. Yep. Okay. Perfect. Wait, before you get off this fire department thing, uh, Jeff or somebody has that, Scott, if you, could you ask Jeff or to send over those those statistics? Because he rattles them off so fast. I like to put them yeah. at the bottom of the minutes. Yeah, he can hear you. Right, Jeff? Eric, Scott, Eric. somebody. Yeah. Thanks. That'd be great because we'd love to include them in our, uh, we like to include them in our minutes. Okay, thanks guys. Have a good evening. Thank you. Okay, we do need an executive session, correct? Correct, Victor, Eric. Victor, you're on mute if you're talking. Sure, we need an executive session. Okay. Like, just to be clear, are we meeting an executive session for the reasons stated in the agenda? Yes. Okay. Okay, so would someone make that motion, please? I make the motion that we go into an executive dis um, session to discuss as stated in the agenda. Those attending would be the uh, three select board members present tonight. Uh, the road foreman, Eric Mativier, and uh, Sarah Merriman. How about the treasurer? You have a better idea if you go. Well, what about the treasurer? You didn't mention Dorinda. Don't you want Dorinda? Oh, yeah. Okay. Sorry about that. Do I need to be there? I don't, you don't want to be. All you right. Be. It isn't going to hurt for you to be there, Sarah. Okay. Yeah. So the so the motion is we're we're including uh, Eric, Sarah, and Dorinda and the select board. Mitch, you're out for a few minutes. Fine. Sorry about that. Okay. Okay, knock them out, please. What? Well, oh, no. First, you have to vote. Sorry, is there a, a second? second that? I'll I'll second that motion. All right. Thanks, good. Okay. Thank you, Randy. All right. Are you guys going to vote on it? Then just give me two minutes to get rid of people. Okay. Yeah. All those in favor. You have to vote. Vote. 
vote. <laughs> oh, no, no. We have to vote when we come out of executive No, session. no, no. You vote to go into executive session. Executive then session. I put people okay, the way all right, all right, all right, all right. I'm with you. So now can you vote? Mitch is still there. Peter, you vote in public session to go okay, into Okay, I'm session. sorry. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Thank you. Okay. Now, okay. That is now 538. Okie dokie. Okay. So I, I will just I will just report that uh, in executive session, uh, we have successfully hired a new member of our road crew. So we are up to full full road crew capacity for the first time in a long time. Good Do you want to say his name? Sure. Fill in his name. Rick, Eric. Richard Dudley. Of Middlesex. Correct. Yes. And he starts October 3rd. 3rd. Okay, thank you. Okay, moving right along. Highway report, update on center road paving, status of possible high re. We covered that, action possible. What have you got, boys? Let's just um, start. Go ahead. No, uh, just uh, they're they're going to start on Center Road uh, Thursday morning, uh, doing the milling, and then he wants to get onto the paving right after. So I would imagine uh, by the end of next week he should be completed. Wow! So you're saying starting on Center Road in two days, right, Hutchins? And that's Hutchins. Yep, okay. the twenty second. Now, do they? They don't paint the lines on the road, right? We have to have someone come in and do that. That's my understanding. Yeah, is that yeah. correct, Vic? So you, can, you can contact the traffic the uh, traffic uh, shop in uh, down on the Barry Montpelier Road, and they'll probably do it for you. They they did it before, but then we're going to grind it up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we lost a little communication there. Yep. And there's no, the ditching is all completed. So once, once that done, it's everything done. Nothing to do to the guardrails, nothing to. Well, we'll see, we'll see what the height is uh, when we get done. Uh, some of the guardrails, we might have to clean underneath them, but we have the tool to do that. Yeah. Okay. Do you guys have plans of posting anything on like front porch forum as an update to the, to the town folks or whatnot? I did already today. I haven't seen it come out yet, but I did this morning or this afternoon, whatever it is. Thank you. Yep. Yeah, it should come out tomorrow. They don't want to yep. talk too far ahead. They'll forget. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh. Um, whatever. It'll be what it'll be, but, it, but our intent is our intent is to keep one lane open at all times. So, I mean, there may be times where they have to block the road off for a couple of minutes, but it shouldn't be long, right? Yeah, yeah they're going to have their they have their own traffic control, so there might be a little okay. bit of delay, but but uh, oh, excuse me. that's about it. Okay, the delay will be well worth it. No. Yes, yes. And the update on the truck is we're expecting it in a month. We hope uh, by the end of the month we're supposed to have it. Yeah, that's what I was last told. The end of the end of September. Correct. Okay. And Correct. Dorinda, you're all set. You're all set with the note, or you will be. Uh, nope. We're gonna. We have to ratify. I was gonna do this during the treasurer's portion. We okay. got to ratify the action that we took um, the other day. Plus, we might need one more motion, which I'll discuss when we get to it. Okay. Fine. Um, Fine. So, how did we how did we make out in the in the torrential rain? Did we have any? Serious damage or just these not damage? not anything uh, serious. We did have a lot of uh, minor washouts, and we spent the day cleaning those up. We still got a little bit to do on uh, McCullough, uh, right across from where Vic is, his driveway, and then down below. I put some stone, but we're gonna have to put some more. So, uh, Victor's tough. You don't have to fix the road for him. Right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't go anywhere. <laughs> What's that? Uh, tell, tell them about the Freightliner, please. Yeah, the, the Freightliner uh, needs an oil pressure sensor. Um, it was showing that it had no oil pressure, but I believe it's the sensor that was bad. Uh, Floyd from, uh, from Buzzy's Garage came over and looked at it, hooked up to the computer. Um, the part came in. He was going to change it out yesterday, tried to do that at our shop. 
Um, but apparently the sensor is buried be behind the starter and a bunch of other things. So he has to take a lot apart. So he wanted to do it at his shop. Um, we tried to drive it there this morning, um, but the computer not would not let it uh, because of the sensor being bad. So we had to have it towed there. Yeah. And then the sand, we're all done sand. Yep, all done sand. Um, we've we're shy probably just 200 yards of, of winter sand we 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 ended up ending it out yesterday afternoon in the torrential downpour we were close enough it was we're, we were, we're in good shape for that um let's see there's what well, oh yes i we're gonna have to uh look into uh salt getting shed. a salt shed um in the past we've gone down to newton's and bought our salt from them and had them load our truck. Uh, that is not an option this year. So we need a place to store it. Um, the state has uh, grant money out there for salt sheds. And the deadline for that grant is October 7th. So I've been working on that. So how big a building, how build a big, big building do we need? Well, I, I, I figured, uh, um, one of those canvas style covers, um, a 30 by 32, which would hold 200 ton. And that's, that's what we go through in a year. Yeah. And that would leave us some room. So if we end up in the future getting bigger, we have that ability to do so. And how long do they say those things last? Assuming a tree doesn't fall on them or something? 20, uh, well, from what I've heard, 25 years for the tarp and 50 years for the frame. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that seems to be what everybody's doing from what yeah. I can tell around the state. Yeah. Just, just on a, a, a pavement slab and then concrete blocks for yeah. a small wall. Yep. Yeah. Does the grant cover 100% of the cost or only 80%? 80%. 80%. Yeah. And do we have any idea roughly what the cost would be? Uh, I've got a quote from one company and we're right in the neighborhood of $60,000. Yeah. And is yeah. that, is that, uh, fully loaded? That's the, the, as the asphalt base and concrete block tarps, everything installation. Yep. Yeah. And I have another company that's supposed to be getting it back to me on, on that as well. Hopefully by the end of the week. And what's the time frame when we have to do it? Okay. <laughs> This year. Yeah. Okay. They won't let us get away with a tarp for one year or any of that stuff. We just have to do it. Yeah. I mean, we really need to have it undercover just, just for stormwater runoff and everything else. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. I understand. Okay. Well, keep us posted. Here's, yep. here's our first big unbudgeted item for this year. <laughs> Hopefully, that's it. Uh, no, it won't be it, but... Eric, how competitive we is that? that we can get that grant. That'll be that'll be really good. That makes a big difference. So yeah. yes. Have you have you talked with anybody about uh, how how competitive the the grant process is for that? I mean, are there a bunch of people going out for it? Somebody I don't know, and I don't know is there's a there's a cap either. It's it's part of the stormwater mitigation grant that's out there, and one of the items on there was salt sheds and sand sheds. Um, I don't, I don't know the competitiveness of it. I just know that I got to get the paperwork filled out into them by 1 p.m. October 7th. Yeah. And you think that that's manageable for you? Yeah. Yeah, I've been, I've been working on it in between running sand. <laughs> so we, we should be okay. okay. Thank you. Well, let's hope we, let's hope we get the grant. Fingers crossed. Yep. Anything else, uh, boys? That's all I have. No. no. Okay. Thank you. I think that's enough. Plenty. Thank you. Yep. Let's have have a good night. Problem. Isn't it unbelievable that, that they would hide that sensor behind the starter? Why can't they just put it on the side of the block somewhere? Don't know. I know. I know. Okay. Uh, so I guess we're all set, Eric. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Have a good evening. Yep. Um, considering the listener's request under errors and omissions to correct the information on a parcel owned by Sarah Seatman, action likely. 
who is who is speaking about this mitch that would that would be shelley. me this is that's your oh, shelley. shelley i'm sorry yes hi shelley hi um this is on the seedman property that was subdivided back in 2021 and the homestead wasn't accepted by the state when they filed their taxes because the property id and spam number changed in error so we put that back to the original number as it should be and at the same time we changed square footage of the garage because there was a mistake on that also okay so it really doesn't doesn't affect our grand list except in a very minor way because of the square footage of the garage right what it affected was their homestead when they filed the taxes right. so we have to do a new property tax bill for them right okay okay any questions about that how about a motion i move that we accept the uh the exception for on the listing for sarah seedman property or the seedman property okay randy you'll second it i will okay thank you all those in favor of the of the motion, please say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? No. Okay. Thank you, Shelley. Thank you. When you guys, when you guys come in to sign the orders, you're going to have to sign. You're going to sign the errors and omissions too. Okay. All right. Just FYI. That's is that here? Is that ready for tonight, Sarah? Uh, yo. Yes, it is. Okay, I can get that. I'll run it tonight. right down to you. Thanks. Okay, I'll be in. I'll be in in the morning. So, uh, so Victor, you can stop. There are only three of us who can sign, so we all need to sign. So you can. Yes, uh, all need to sign. Okay, perfect. Um, treasurer's report, Dorinda. Okay. Um, well, the first thing is I wanted to let everyone know that we did the audit on Wednesday. They came in, finished up everything. Um. It went very smoothly. Um, we had no issues this year. She's compiling um, a the draft version and should have that to us in a couple weeks. Um, and I wanna just publicly give Cheryl a lot of credit. Um, she had a lot of stuff put together for it and it certainly made a difference this year. It's amazing how having a real bookkeeper makes a real difference. When Said comes, that right along. It makes a difference all the time, but a lot of time it especially makes a difference. Yep, yep, certainly is. So that's the first thing. That's um, part of the good news. The other thing is we need to ratify. I sent out an email to everybody um, the other day when I realized that we weren't going to have the truck by the time our loan uh, quote was going to expire. So um, I did get the authorization from three of the select board members to um, authorize initiating a note for $200,000 for five years. So I need a motion that says that you authorize Dorinda to, you want to ratify, I don't know if you have to put this in a minute that you have to ratify this, but I'm authorizing Dorinda to move forward with initiating a $200,000 note for five years at the rate of 2.79% for the purchase of the new Kenworth truck. And the reason, the reason we were doing that is it was anticipated interest rates were going up. So by doing this, we saved we saved the lower interest rate. That's yeah, right. was a change of a one one point two five uh, percent or something close to that. Wow. Yeah. Oh, so, good catch, Dorinda. Thank you. Yep. Um, and while you're at it, I think you might want this as a separate motion. Should you decide to do it, that. We have to sign this note by the 30th and we will not have another select board meeting prior to that. So either three select board members will need to come in and sign it once I receive the paperwork, or you can make a motion giving the chair the authorization to sign on behalf of the board, but that would need to be a motion put into the minutes as well. I would just have soon have three of us sign it if we can. I think we should be able to. <clears throat> yeah, I can. I can make sure I make a trip down here to sign. And with a little, you know, with a few days, a few days uh, warning, I think it should be. 
as soon as I get the paperwork, I'll let everybody know. I mean, I don't even mind driving it to everybody's house. That isn't the problem. It's just, you know, it's going to be a quick turnaround. Drive it to my house. Cocktails will be served. Okay. <laughs> For everybody. Cookies, I'll provide the cocktails. No, I, th I think we can, I think we can, uh, I think we can make it happen. So I don't think we need that motion, but we do right. need a motion uh, on the note itself. If, if, Victor or Randy would make that motion, please. Yeah, so I'll make a motion to ratify uh, giving Dorinda the authorization to um, uh, enter into the agreement with the five-year note for $200,000 for the new dump truck. Second. Thank you, Victor. Can All you guys tell me the, the name of the bank you're doing this with? Uh, Community Bank. Okay. And the rate's 2.79%, if you didn't get that. 2.79, right? Yeah. Yep. And it's a straight up 200,000. Yes. Yep. And hopefully, hopefully we don't, depending on what the trade-in turns out to be, we don't have to spend all that money. So we're going to be paying some of it back, we hope. But that was just to provide a little hedge just in, uh, just in case. I forgot to ask uh, Eric, uh, did Eric get a hold of you, Dorinda? As far as uh, that guy coming over to tell us how much they're going to give us for the truck? No, he didn't mention it to me. Did he, uh, did you mention it to him? The day that I called you and spoke to you that I had asked him if we knew what the trade-in was going to be. And he didn't at the time, but he was hauling sand that day. So he couldn't stop to do it. That's why we determined this was the best thing to do is just take a stab in the dark. Um, but we still need that that number. We still are going to need to know what it is. Absolutely. I'll follow up with him tomorrow. Yeah. It's not any urgency because we're going to have enough money to cover it, I'm sure. Um, but it was just our way of saving that 2.79%. Yeah. And originally we were thinking it was going to be like 60K and this we're, we cut that in half for the loan. So... Yeah, it feels pretty comfortable. Yep. Yeah. So we need to vote on that motion. No, yeah. you need a second. Uh, didn't Your Victor second. second? Randy made the motion. Okay. Second. So all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Anything else, Dorinda? I think that's it for now. Um, that's great. That's great news on the audit. I mean, it's. As much as it seemed like everything was going fine, you never know until I come in and pick up all the stuff, whether it's really going fine or not. So, yeah, no, she said that. I mean, she actually wrote me a letter the next day and said she enjoyed her day here and um, that everything looked really good. So well, that's a little different than our experience. And two years that. ago, absolutely. Yeah. Wonderful. Um, do you? Th I think this might be a good time to, to uh, talk about the R my conversation with RB Tech. Okay. What do you think? Uh, sure. <laughs> okay. Because in the past, this is when it's been brought up under treasures issues. So I got a call today from Brittany at RB Tech. Um, she says that the town needs to hire sign this contract with them by the end of the month. If we don't sign it by the 30th of September, that RB Tech will start the disengagement process. And did the disengagement process means that they pull out all our their antivirus software, their Perception Pro, their proof point, which checks, I guess, spam for for spam, and also the uh, unified cloud, which is our Wi-Fi, um, as well as the Veeam, which is what apparently is where our is RB Tech's server backup. And speaking of server backup, uh, Brittany said that they we have been riding on a lower rate for the past year for their server backup. We are currently charged $75 a month to back up our information on their server, and RB Tech has elevated those rates to $145 a month. Um, the issue, I asked her why we haven't been receiving these contracts. And she said that uh, we, it has been RB Tech's practice to automatically roll over clients every year in their contracts. And I guess this year they, they quit that. So the last contract we've signed with them was 2018. Um, and now uh, they need a commitment from us 
or else we're going to go through this process of disengagement. Once we are disengaged or once we go through the disengagement process, we will have to pay a fee to re-engage, which I'm sure will not be insignificant. Meanwhile, RB Tech will do will provide service calls for us at the non-contracted rate of $200 versus the contracted rate for municipalities or nonprofits, which is $130.50 per hour. That is all bad news and totally unacceptable to me. They know and we know it's going to take us three months at least to do a good job of considering other providers. And we can't allow them to disengage everything. Um, I don't know. I don't know how we handle it. I don't mind calling Ruben and telling him that and telling him we want a three month or a six month contract or whatever we have to have. But that that's a a lot of risk to disengage all that stuff. But B, it's it's scary because we need those services. We can't have them pull a plug on all those things. Well, I asked I asked Brittany and you may have better luck talking to Ruben. But I asked Brittany, I said, do you guys offer like three month contracts? And she said, no, you can sign a, a one year contract, but we require a 90 day notice if you're going to withdraw. So uh, if we sign a one year contract, we've got to give him three months notice saying we're going to you know, be out of here by the end of January. And so FYI. Well, that isn't so bad, actually, but we have to have a contract. So. Let me, uh, the end of the month, Jesus, we don't even have another meeting by the end of the month. What's the point? Well, and so one of the issues that I have with this is here they are, they don't issue this contract until, you know, a week into the month. They give you two weeks to basically hold you over the barrel and say, sign this before the end of this month when they themselves have have not issued a contract for we're working into four years now. Um, you know, you said 18 was the last time we signed a contract, yep. so three years, whatever. Um, it, it, it doesn't sit well with me. Um, oh, doesn't sit well with me either. And, you know, they know us, they know they've got us over a barrel and they're, they're sticking the sword in and, and twisting it. But the bottom line is, Unless, unless people have changed their mind, and there are only three of us here tonight, we know how we know how Dorinda feels. I think we made the decision to go ahead with this process, so we need to figure out how to do it. And we can sign that one-year contract and immediately immediately give them ninety days notice. I mean, the, here's the question: the question is, if once we give them that notice, they're going to pull out no matter what, then said, yeah, we've got to wait till we get through the search process and then make a decision and then wait three months. So likely it's six months away before we, we would be able to, uh, to leave. But About the search process, you guys asked me to go look for other IT firms. And so far uh, people are either with RB Tech or they're with Tech Group of Burlington, which I think is one of the ones that contacted us to try and did a cold call for us several years ago. So the, the bottom line is also there just aren't that many certain providers around here to do what they do, which is have an offsite server, uh, you know, et cetera. Oh, I know. Also, I want to note too, that we might've signed the last contract in 2018, but we've been receiving increases every year. Um, we were doing 676, then it went up to 705. This month we got billed 735. So they certainly have been changing our prices along the way. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. I mean, what I am, I mean, the money is important, really important. But what I'm concerned about is that we don't seem to be getting the service we expected and wanted. And, you know, I'm going to tell that to Ruben right, right from his face. I mean, we don't like these random rate increases. We don't like the fact that you don't seem to be looking ahead and, creating a plan for us, for our, for our IT stuff. You just tell us it's our job to react to these emergencies as you bring them up and then you don't give us any time. I mean, they, they call us, they, they keep saying we need a new server. Well, where's the quote? Where's the plan? Where's the, I don't know. It's frustrating to me because that isn't what I expected. 
Right. The one of the interesting thing that Sarah heard, and I'll share this because she shared it with me, that one of the places she talked to, they said the problem was their technician. Once they got a new technician working on their account, their problems seemed to go away. I don't know if that's an issue or not, but um, it's just food for thought that if you're going to talk to a Ruben. Well, something's got to change. If it isn't, the and, and the technician is the is certainly the head of the spear. So, uh, well, yes. Since we're, since we're 10 days from the end of the month, um, I don't know what you want to do. Do you want to schedule a special meeting after talking to Ruben? How do you want to handle this? I would like to have the uh, authority to, uh, to sign the contract with the understanding that we can cancel it with 90 days notice. I mean, I don't think we have any choice. I think they've got. I think they've got us. So, I don't think there's anything to talk about there. Then we can decide if we want to get a proposal from these other guys. I think probably we will. Um, I'd like to hear from from RB how they can how they can change things if they can change things or what they can promise us or, you know, we just got to work our way through the process. But we have no time to do anything between now and the end of the month. And I don't want them to start throwing switches on the first day of next month. I find it hard to believe they would do that, but maybe they would. I'm sure Brittany's just 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 spouting the uh, spouting the party line. I mean, she has no real authority to negotiate anything. I don't believe. I I, I agree. And she said that uh, you know if there are any questions, she can call. She can invite Rupert to uh, Rupert Rupin, Rupin to talk to uh, the board or whatever. The the point is that I was I was just asking her all these questions because I knew that the meeting was happening. I wanted to know what would happen if we didn't sign that contract. And right. That was the answer. And you have a copy of the contract, right? Somewhere I, I sent you guys all a copy of it uh, probably a month ago. We looked at it in the last. Uh, it was on the last meeting's agenda. And that's when we decided oh, I'm sure to. I, I'm sure I've got it. I just, I just want to make sure that 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 90 day cancellation clause is actually in there. Well, it's probably. I, the I mean, unless, unless, I mean, if, if people want to have a special meeting, we could certainly do that. I, I think we're all sick of special meetings, and I don't think there's anything to talk about really, except we have to do this and then figure out what the next step is. Sarah, did did they say? Uh, how long the the disengagement process was or did they explain that process at all she didn't I, that's why i said to her, you know i like peter says she's not i don't know how i don't know what britney's function is there but i said to her you know what happens if we don't sign it the sign it on the 30th and she says well we start the disengagement process and i said well what's the disengagement process and she said we pull all our all of our we pull all of our stuff off your systems. Well, what, you know, so then she just listed antivirus, perception pro, proof point, unified cloud, Wi Fi, Veeam, and then removing us off the server. So that was, you know, I think for more technical explanation of how long that takes, you'd have to talk to somebody who does that. I don't think Brittany does that. So the other thing, the other thing we could do uh, is Randy, you and Phil and I could have a conversation with Ruben if you'd like to be able to ask them those questions directly. I'm not trying to short circuit that process. I just think I just think we need some kind of guidelines about whether we can agree to sign the contract or not. Because if we don't, if we don't, we're likely to be in a bad place as of uh, October 2nd. Well, I find sure, it well, that's true. That. I mean, you can ask the questions and say, and if he says nothing's going to happen for 15 days, then we can then we can wait till our uh, then we can wait till our meeting. But if they're going to start if they're going to start turning stuff off as of the first, we need to uh, we need to act. I think in in general, though, that you would think if a, a good customer that pays their bills that have been with you for probably close to eight years or something, that the owner would have reached out and said, "What's the problem?" Yeah. I mean, oh, I, find oh, it, I find it hard that a secretary calls and says, we're going to start the disengagement process if you don't sign this by the 30th. And I'm, I'm looking at the contract right now and, and under Section 8, the Termination of Perception Management Services Program, um, bullet point G 
it says that the client may terminate this agreement within 60 days pri with prior written notice to RB Technologies for convenience or good cause. So there's a 60 day um, window here that it asks for underneath the termination clause. Uh, again, eight bullet point G. Um, and again, I'm just scanning this section really quickly, but um, it looks it looks like sixty days is the number. Well, it's going to take us sixty days to make a decision what we're going to do. <laughs> I mean, you know, if, if someone's really going to come in and give us a proposal, they're going to need to come in and spend the time and go through all our servers, figure out all the stuff. I mean, it's not a small, as much as we're a small organization, there's a lot of moving parts to our, uh, our IT system. And unfortunately, unfortunately, Phil isn't here tonight. He has a, a better about a better idea about all this than I do. But I mean, the question is, the question is, why don't, why don't we do this? Let me, let me talk to Ruben tomorrow and see what I can come up with from him. And then we can decide if we need to have a special meeting or not. But my recommendation is going to be that we sign the damn contract and continue to pursue other options. And then we can give them the 60-day notice. Sounds better than 90 days. It's going to take 60 days to get everything organized anyway. And Sarah, the other thing that I'm that I'm looking at here that kind of draws my attention as well is, uh, and I'd have to see the old contract to to understand it better. But um, there is in this new agreement, um, there is an auto renewal uh, per the terms of this service agreement included in this contract as well. So. Um, you know, that whole conversation about this being a new policy, it looked like they're they're doing the same exact thing as they were before. Um, Maybe they just had to redo that. They after. haven't bothered to deal with the contracts and now they're now they're looking at them for whatever reason. But, you know, shame on them. That's them, not us. And but I'm the, sure I, re I remember that there was language in there that for time from time to time, they can adjust the rates. And the new the new billable rate, according to this, is two hundred dollars an hour. Uh, there's no mention in here of at least underneath that table that talks about a discounted rate from the municipality. I don't think they gave us a discounted rate. What you do? Well, is you what I what I asked her. I said if we if we um, if we let this contract expire, what happens if we call RB Tech and when something in our system fails, will you still respond or not respond? She said. Uh, we'll still respond, but we'll we uh, but it will cost you two hundred dollars an hour, which is what we charge our non-contracted uh, clients versus the one hundred and thirty dollars um, and fifty cents for a nonprofit rate. I have the feeling that that nonprofit rate is lower because if you're a client, because they probably work on work on you virtually. In other words, instead of coming with their little toolbox to your place, they work remotely, which well, is that, what they all, all those, all those this things, is... I mean, it sounds like they've got the wrong rate in their contract. Who, who knows? But, you know, we need to pay attention to, we need to pay attention to that contract. And, uh, you know, well, Peter, I just sent you, I just sent you the agreement. It's, it's got, as you, it's, it's, of course, it's nothing is in paper. It's nothing to print out. Everything needs to be clicked on. Uh, including a PDF. So the PDF is built into the agreement. So when yeah. you click on that type, so you'll see it. But on, on page two, Sarah, if you're looking at that, the page two, the the um the rate structure that she that they provided in here, that $130.50, that that is only for the first two hours of service for the month. Right. Okay. And that's and that's charged as part of the monthly fee. And didn't we increase that from two hours to more than that? Yes. Also, I have to say, I'm, I'm really confused by the terminology. Is the perception monthly agreement, is that separate from what we're talking about? Or is that part of this contract? I mean, I'm, I'm, 
I don't know if this perception is something else. Is that a software agreement or is the perception actually what all of RB is providing for us? I think the perception, I think the perception is their ability to work on our system remotely that they install, but I'm not sure. Well, it, it says here too that the uh, perception is audiovisual uh, defender managed antivirus protection. And right. it, there's, there's a bunch of different things in here that are contained underneath this um, perception management um services here right that's their monthly bill to us and then we get so many hours right and then everything that's not covered under that perception agreement they then send us an overcharge bill so like for this instance for um an invoice here that's dated for um september 12th it is computer insult consulting, which is their perception monthly service, four and a half hours, and we're paying $130. And then so, so then we have adjustments where they took away two hours from our our buildup and took away $260, and we only paid $325 for the monthly charge because we had two hours left over, I guess, from the previous month. Yeah. Also, I don't, I don't know why I'm getting these contracts. I have no ability as a town clerk to sign them. I mean, that's not really my job. That's, or a select. No, it's not. it's not. So what's your pleasure here, guys? I hate to go, I hate to get too far ahead of our skis when there are only uh, three of us here. Uh, but, so, I, I feel like we need clarification on their billing rates in this contract because the rate that they're quoting Sarah is different from what the contract says. Yep. Um, I I think that there needs to be a conversation with, uh, with Ruben about the issues that we're having and make it perfectly clear that, that we're not happy with the service that they're providing. Yep. I do agree with you. Uh, and I'm not happy about it, but I hate being held over over the barrel. Um, I think they're sure. doing it on purpose. Um, if that 60 day clause for convenience or good cause is um, is what we have to use to sign an a an annual agreement and then get out of it, um, I would want to make sure that we comb that over to make sure there aren't any like significant penalties for doing so. Um, but that well, might Wendy, be... I, I would I would encourage you're you're good at contracts. You read it, I'll read it. Um, you know, I'm I'm why don't we do this? I'm gonna have a conversation with Ruben, Randy. I will I will call you uh, after that, Victor. I'm happy to I can, I actually can't call you because then it's a meeting. We would have to have a special meeting. But yeah. I think the bottom line is unfortunately we need to sign the damn thing and then get on with the process as quickly and expeditiously as we can. Well, I certainly think you should sit down and talk to Ruben again about the whole, you know, everybody's, um, you know, lack of uh, confidence in what's happening here. I mean, they've only, uh, we had him come in, I don't know, it must be a month ago now. He came in on a Friday when nobody was working and, but everybody's computers were shut off and he tried to install the new Windows program. He says, well, I'm going on vacation next week, so um, I'll have to do the other ones when he gets back. He hasn't done anybody else's yet, and that was a month ago. It's well, like there's no follow through. To the, to, the extent, to the extent you are the person who has, you know, for lack of a better word, had most of the interaction with them and most of the issues, I would like to have you be part of a meeting with him. I'm going to have him come over. We can sit down with them. Randy, you can come if you if you want to and, you know, really hash this out between now and the end of the month about whether we're going to sign this contract. But the, the bottom line is, guys, I don't think we have any choice but to sign the contract. We can't go without our computers. We can't go without our email. We can't go without proper backups. We just cannot. So I, I agree with that 100 percent. And I also don't think you're going to be able to move to a new company within three months. So I don't, I don't either, Dorinda. I think it's going to take them a couple of months to even get us a proposal. Then we've got to review it, ask questions, blah, blah, blah. Um, 
you're gonna you're a long ways out. If you could do it in six months, I'll be surprised. No, I I I don't disagree a bit. So I'll I'll make the motion to to you know after that meeting with uh, with Ruben to give Peter the authorization to sign another annual contract. Um, and but at the same at the same time, I think we need to start looking at uh, at other options. Um, continue to look at other options. So anyway. Okay. So, Victor, you'll second that? I will. Okay, all in favor? Aye. I will, I will call him tomorrow, and I'll, and I'll report back. Dorinda, you're generally going to be around? For the most part, I'm around, yeah. Okay, well, I'll see, what his, I'll see what his schedule is. I'm pretty much around the next two weeks, so I should be able to – I mean, he, he basically should be able to accommodate our schedule, for Christ's sake, I would say. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Friday, I won't be around during the day Friday, but other than that, I think I'm around. I okay. can make myself be around. Okay, well, I won't I won't put you on the hook until I talk to you. Uh, if you give me enough heads up, Peter, I'll try to make it as well, but I, I don't want to hold it up for me either. So, okay, so uh, when, when do you usually get back to town at the end of the day, Randy? Uh, my schedule, if I know ahead of time, my schedule except for Wednesdays, I can be fairly flexible. So Wednesdays is tough for me, but other than that, if I know ahead of time, uh, it could be a midday meeting for, for most days. Okay. Okay. But is it better to do it at four o'clock in the afternoon? Just saying. Yeah, that's fine. That's it's, okay. it's easier, but yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, so, do we want to take up this next item, or do we want to wait until we have a full? No, full no, no, no. I need an answer to this because I am now getting. We're now getting. People are just sending in letters to the select board saying we're going to ask for two thousand dollars at the March twenty March seventh, twenty twenty three town meeting, and I've been promising them that I'll get it back to them about whether or not you're going to go back to your old. A uh, system of ask of requesting per petitions for um, anything yeah. over two fifty, or if you're going to stick um, with the last year's I've thing. I've gotten a few calls too, and I just I just said to them, I said, guys, these are due the end of the year. You've got three months. Don't put a gun to my head about when we have to make this decision. I think it's a little. I mean, I understand they want to know, and I understand they're anxious, but uh, I don't know. Are we are we just going to say okay we're gonna we're gonna do it the way we've done it the last few years or are we going to say no we're going back to the old way how do you how do you guys feel no we're going back to the old way Randy uh, yeah I'm fine with going back to the old way <laughs> is so my only I I don't mind going back to the old way my only question is which I think I brought up before whether that $250 is the right number. We've had that $250 forever. Well, if just to for you guys can take that up next year. Right now, I mean, that 250 mark is, I mean, my advice is I have to deal with these requests. I'm, correct me if I'm wrong, Sarah, but yeah. that 250 is a magic number, right? Where, where anything 250 and below is kind of grouped into that special articles and right. the minute it goes into the 251 category, we start getting into individual. Once you uh, get to the, anything over 250 requires a, a petition signed by 75 Middlesex voters saying we want to see this. And then it gets it. Uh, then it gets its own separate article on the warning. Right. Yeah. So I, I think that 250 just stays where it sits. And Right. The question that you guys are dealing with is. Should you, 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 the board imposed a COVID uh, requirement uh, last year that as long as those special articles, no one is asking for more or than they did the previous year, or if they are not new organizations, they can just write a letter to the select board asking to be uh, level funded from the previous year and it'll go on the, and the town meeting warning. What you've always had in the past is that if it's anything over 250 bucks, you have to get 75 signatures, even if you're making the same request that you have every year. Right. 
I'm in favor of that. I'm in favor of that. I'm not, but I'm only one of three. So I'll make the motion. Uh, I'll make the motion to revert back to the old practice of anything over the two hundred and fifty dollars um, is required to have the. Did you say seventy five uh, person? It's five percent. It's five percent of the the uh, the vote registered voters. Okay, so five percent of the registered voters. Mm -hmm. Victor, you'll second, second that. that. Second that. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I'm opposed. Uh, anyway, so we've done it, I guess. I, I don't guess. We have done it. So you can tell them, Sarah. Okay. Let the Thank chips you. Fall, uh, let the chips fall where they may. Yep. Um, okay. Changing the, uh, changing the road name, Mitch. Hi, man. Hi yes. Uh, yes, I have a request from uh, the folks who live off of a little spur on French Road to name their private. Uh, there's at least three addresses on the road, so it's supposed to be named a private road. Hasn't been for some time, but um, I'm addressing that now. They've requested Luna Lane, L-U-N-A. I've gotten the okay from both the state 911 board and the Montpelier Post Office. They both said it's great. Who's Luna? Do you really want to know? Yeah. I think it's the name of, of the dog of one of the <laughs> residents. That's a better excuse than most. <laughs> okay, fair enough. And are all the are all of the residents uh, on that road in agreement? Uh, apparently they've all indicated they're fine with that. I don't have anything in writing, but but they've they've indicated to you that they yes. don't have any objections. Correct. We're not looking for Luna Hill. Luna Road. Luna Lane. Okay, Luna Lane. So we get the name and road right. Yeah, let's make sure we get the name right and the road sign right. Luna Lane. Yes. Okay. Is there a motion, gentlemen? I'll make the motion that uh, we uh, allow it to be uh, Luna Lane. Second, Randy? Yep. I know I'm working you guys hard, but I don't have any choice. All in favor? <laughs> Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Luna Lane it is, Mitch. Thank you. Thank you, folks. Um, approving minutes of the September 6th meeting. Motion, please. I'll make that motion. I'll second it. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. We've approved our minutes. Approving the MOU with CV Fiber, action likely. I talked to Rob. He says it's fine. Actually, the part that he had been waiting for um, so is, is supports the town's position. So he recommends that you sign it. Make that motion. Okay. Okay. Second it. Victor? Second it, Peter. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Maybe we should only have three people on the select board. <laughs> <laughs> Just they can see how it happens. We're zipping, we're zipping right along here. Uh, uh, but Peter, before yes. we move, before we move from that, I believe we held a check for that too. Can we authorize the uh, release of that check? Yes, we should. Do we need a motion okay. to do that? I, just, I don't think so. We've bucks. already approved the check. We were just holding it pending approval of the MOU. Yeah. Okay. So everybody's well, in agreement. Is, you Dorinda, Dorinda, that's that? the burning hole in uh, Dorinda's pocket right now. She's ready to send it out. So yeah, okay. we can send it out with a we can send it out with a signed MOU. So we need to, who needs to sign the MOU, Sarah? I'm looking at it right now. Um, uh, just chair of the select board. Okay. Well, I'll be down in the morning. Okay. Okay, orders. We've talked about the orders. We all need to sign them. Uh, discussion about structuring the FY24 budget discussion. Is that you, Dorinda? That's me. I put that on. Oh, okay. I, I just wanted, this is a select board assistant question. Do you guys, a lot of times you've had people come in, you know, various, the conservation commission, the planning commission come in and uh, make their pitch or do you want, do, do, you, do you've also in the past said you don't like that. So could you just tell me what you would like? 
Can you elaborate on that a little bit? I don't understand. Sure. So usually what the board does is um, <clears throat> they have, for example, the fire department will come in and, and deliver its proposal for the FY24 budget. Okay. And the highway department will come in, you and you and Eric. Uh, sometimes we they've asked the conservation to come in, commission to come in or you know, the cemetery commission never comes in, but the, um, the planning commission will say, you know, we need this much for consulting. And a lot of times the board has had people, groups come in or representatives that kind of went by the wayside during the pandemic. So I guess my question to you is during this budget, upcoming budget season, which begins, you know, pretty much pretty soon, do you want that? Or do, would you let, or could people submit letters or do you want it just from the highway department and the fire department or how do you guys want to, what do you want to do? So my take on it is, you know, whatever the number is, 90% of the money is between the roads and the office. Yeah. Um, and, I, and to the extent that this is likely to be uh, the first year in the new world with the fire department, I think it's good for them to come in and present theirs. You know, their, their budget's a pretty good chunk. I don't think we need to, I don't think we need to meet with the, the planning commission or any of those other groups, they can send us a letter. And if we look at the letter and we have questions and we want to meet with them, we can meet with them, but I don't think we need to. All right. I, I agree with Peter. Um, yep, that's great. That's all so I let's need. Make it the, let's make it the office, the fire department. And the highway. And the highways. Okay. And also I have some correspondence, which I also sent to you, but I want to get it into the record. Okay, go ahead. That correspondence is from the school district. Um, I think I sent you guys a copy saying that they, um, that uh, the Middlesex representative, uh, Dennis Hill has resigned from the Washington Central Unified Union School District. And um, the, uh, there needs to be an appointment. Um, and they were looking for, uh, they're looking for an appointee. I, it's unclear from this letter who does that appointing. I think it actually might be the select board. I don't think so. No? We, why would we be appointing somebody to the school board? Board, yeah. I don't know. This makes it, never I don't have. know. Does this letter serves as notification to the select board of a vacancy uh, due to the resignation of Middlesex Representative Dennis Hill. The appointed replacement will serve until March 7th. The new term starts at that point. So yeah, maybe it doesn't. I don't know why they're they're notifying you, but anyway, um, I guess I'm getting confused by the boards. Uh, I mean, you're, I, think you're it's up to them. I think it's up to them to recruit their new member, not us. I mean, yeah. if they're asking us if we know anybody, I would say if we know anybody, we should be we should be reaching out to them. This is important. That's yep. you know that's more money than the town budget right there. We need to be well represented. Okay, well, there's official notification in the minutes, so if anybody. If anybody wants to show up for Middlesex, that would be a good idea. Yeah. Can okay. we can we circle back to that that other budget conversation? Okay. Um, so as as part of the budget committee, um, I know one thing that's been on our on our plate is circling back with the various groups uh, for the CIP, and okay. I think the remaining. Um, the remaining folks on our on our agenda, we're meeting with the planning commission in their next meeting, um, which I believe is Wednesday. Know, what's that? Wednesday. Yeah, that's it's coming up. I'm not. I can't remember the date. Any commission? Yes. Wednesday. So uh, we've got representative uh, going there to kind of talk through that CIP process. The next step after that is to circle back with the select board and um, uh, bring that process full circle um, to the to the board yep. um, in an effort to try to work that process into this next year's budgeting um, cycle. Um, hearing the conversation around not folks that used to come to the board with their budgets. I'm wondering if the budget committee plays a role there um, and what the board's feelings are there, how that process typically goes. I haven't, I haven't been part of that. And I know the, the budget committee prior to this has played a very limited role, but is that, is that an opportunity for us to help the board um, in preparations for the, for the following year's budget preparations? The answer is yes. I would hope 
I would hope at the meeting, I mean, we're, so from some of these organizations, we're going to get a letter or a report or a request or whatever we're going to call it. You know, we're going to review that request. I would suggest that the budget department, the budget department needs to be part of that. And also, obviously, if any of those uh, capital items are in this year's budget, they need to be presented. If they're out in the future, they need to be presented just because we add them, to, we need to add, add them to the plan, but they're not part of the, they're not part of the budget. Right. Yeah. So it's really two separate pieces in my mind. Right. It's the proposal for the, for the next year's budget and then the CIP process, um, which, which does include when, when they put that together, it did include, you know, uh, town government folks, select board, bookkeepers, treasurers, yep. all that kind of stuff, yep. which yep. Uh, I'm sure has limited, um, items on their agendas. But um, anyway, that's something that as we put together future agendas and we start coming into this, um, we need to make sure that we include uh, yeah. that as part of the process. Yes. And also, also the other thing I would say to any of these groups is if they have some special things like some special project or something above and beyond what they usually spend, you know, I would encourage them to come and present it to us rather than just send us a letter. But if it's pretty much a pro forma, you know, renewal of their existing budget, so much for advertising, so much for mailing, you know, blah, blah, blah. And it's a few thousand dollars. I don't think we need to, I don't think we need to meet with them. We need to review their request, absolutely, and compare it to last year's request and all that. But I don't yeah, think- Yeah, those one-offs, those one-offs should be able to be handled through that, that uh, the capital improvement process. Um, hopefully folks are, going to get into the habit of actually filling out that form and going through that process where it'll come through um, and hit hit both the budget committee and the select board um, yeah. as a whole. So I think we've met with everybody but those folks. I think the cemetery folks, uh, the planning commission are the last on the, on the list. Um, like you just said, the cemetery folks didn't seem like that's a... Uh, a real big thing where they're going to have anything come through. So right. um, anyway, I thought that we should just kind of throw that out there, get on the agenda and give you guys an update as to where we were um, yeah. coming into this. So it seems fitting. And the other thing I would, I would say is, you know, generally earlier is better. We don't want to get in the holidays, but we always get pushback from people saying, why are you asking us for next year's budget in the, <laughs> in the month of October, but uh, we've got quite a bit on our on our plate for this fall. So spreading out the budget process is, uh, is a good thing. Well, I suppose that asking the budget, the fire department to come in in October, that they won't like that. So. Um... Oh, they're in the, they're in the new friendly mode and we're in the new friendly mode. So. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna blitz everybody tomorrow now that I know how it's all gonna structure and get the process rolling. Okay, the other thing the other thing to remind the budget committee is they definitely have uh, capital things in their uh, in their plan. I know. So they have to remember to do it. Have you met with them, Randy? Have the budget committee met with them? Uh, who's that, the fire department? Yes. Uh, absolutely. Oh, okay. So they're all set? Yeah, or we've gone through the process with Eric. Um, they they had uh, most everything that they had listed was already contained within the plan, so there weren't any new additions. Um, okay. But uh, we definitely had that conversation, and uh, the budget committee did update the um, the plan, uh, uh, showing the allocation of the seventy thousand dollars for the for the air packs and whatnot. So yes, yep. that's all been uh, current. Yep. Okay. That sounds good. That makes sense to you, Sarah? Kind of. Kind of. <laughs> <laughs> what other the meeting? If you got money, if you want money, ask for it. Well, yep. the other thing to think about too, and while Shelly's here, it's a good time to mention it. Um, we went, we outsourced our um, listing of freight, our phrasing last year. Yep. Um, I, I think we're going to have to spend some time with the new listers because a I don't think you know I don't know how they feel about taking over that responsibility um, of going out and appraising the properties so there's a discussion do we move forward another year 
with having an outside service do it or the listers themselves. And, yeah, and also, um, I don't know if they'll have a fair idea of their needs for their portion of the budget. And wasn't there, isn't there a, a significant software expense that we're anticipating for next well, year? <clears throat> there was at one time, but again, I don't know if that's still in the works or not. And I don't know if, um, you know, if Shelly or anybody is aware of that at this point or not. Yeah. Okay. Well, maybe we should meet with them sooner rather than later so we can start the ball rolling because it sounds okay. like homework to be done. Yeah. Okay, so the other the other quick item I have is uh, is this uh, disgruntled uh, landowner up on Bear Swamp who now wants to meet with me personally to discuss the last meeting, and uh, I don't think that meeting's going to go well, and I'm not excited about meeting with him. So I don't know how we do that. Whether we tell him that he needs to put himself on the agenda and appear before the select board. Uh, whether we ask him to meet with our attorney, I don't know how we handle it, but I mean, he's not going to lie. I'm not going to tell him anything different than what I told him at the meeting and he's not going to like it. So I'm not, very I don't, I don't think, a, I don't think a one-on-one -on -one meeting hearing what I just heard. I don't think a one-on-one -on -one meeting is warranted. No, no, no. And I, you know, whatever he has to say, he can say it to the whole board. So I'm going to tell him he needs to put himself on the agenda, if that makes sense to everybody. Makes sense to me. Uh, you know, I didn't hear it personally, but I don't understand why he would demonize me to, and, uh, and uh, when I had really nothing to do with any of it. Well, hey. Guys, I'm going to just really caution you. This is just, remember, this is a resident of our community, and if you, um, I would just keep it very professional. No, no, no. But all I'm saying is the professional way to do it is to have him come and meet with the board. Okay. And we've and got that in the minutes. In don't the include minutes. any snarky comments in the in the minutes, but we all heard the way he uh, he behaved himself and I don't anticipate it'll be any different and I'm reluctant to meet with him. So I just wanted to tell you that. And I will tell him if he wants to speak to me, he can do it at a Warren Select Board meeting. Okay. And then we can decide if our attorney needs, heaven forbid, needs to get involved. I hope not. But uh, He's got a he's got a chip on his shoulder, or as they say, you know, what's the definition of a well balanced politician? A chip on both shoulders. <clears throat> I don't know. I'm not looking forward to interacting with him. I can tell you that, but I will. Uh, okay. But I will call. Okay. Okay. That doesn't need to go in the minutes. Anything well, else? Everything is recorded. Everything is recorded. I know. That's all right. Um. Anything else for tonight's meeting? I, I got a question. This is Shelly. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm meeting with the state on something on some current use issues that we're having on Thursday. Did you want me to bring that up to them to see if there's a program out there? I mean, I don't have a problem going out for the reappraisal as long as I have the proper training. So I do it right for the residents. But I, I think there might be a program out there and I can run it by him and see if there is. Well, the, the question, the question I think was, and I can't, remember exactly what the but what i understood was it was a major upgrade to the software which is basically handles all this all this listing process and all the all the tax records and all of that and that it was a big expense for us and it got put off for a year so the question i have is is that question first of all are we looking at a big software expense coming up next summer uh to for a mandatory upgrade to our system in terms of whether you guys do the inspections or we or we subcontracted, I think we need to have a, a conversation about that. But it wouldn't hurt for you to ask uh, what training they have available and what the cost is, because if we are going to take it back over ourselves, and if that's what you guys are recommending, we've got to make darn sure you're trained, right? I agree. <laughs> yeah, okay. I'm remembering okay. that that software upgrade was a significant amount of money, either fifteen or thirty thousand dollars. I couldn't remember if twenty five was half of it or wasn't twenty five. I can't remember, but it was real. I remember it was real money, and it, they they came to us. The previous listeners came to us and said, "This is something we need to do now. We have no choice." And then it got, uh, and then it got put off. So, 
I think we need to know in our budget process whether that's staring us uh, staring us in the face or not. So, Shelly, if you can try and find that out, that would be great. I'll, I'll try to do that for you. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Anything else, anyone? Happy fall. The leaves are changing. The rain's coming down. And uh, here we go. Be glad you're not on the road crew. They had a big day today. Great. Thank you, guys. Have a good night. Okay. Bye-bye.